Hello and welcome to Crafting Unedited. My name is Sierra and today we're going to be putting some rhinestones on some things. So he trains for warehouse. One of my partners is really big on pretty much every type of crafting element you could possibly need. <laughs> so they sent me as part of one of our garment decoration challenges um, some of their hotfix rhinestones and some other materials as well. I did not use these in the garment challenge because I was still learning how to use them. So now that I've got a little bit of insight on how to use them, I'm gonna teach you how to use them as well. So these are Hotfix SS10 rhinestones. They're about 2.8 to 3.0 millimeters big, round, whatever you wanna call it. Um, so that conversion will help you later on in this video um, when you're in design space and trying to make your template. So they sent me the rhinestones, which has the self-adhesive, not self-adhesive, the heat activated um, sticky stuff on the back and this. At first I was like, what the heck is this? Why are you sending me some regular vinyl to put on a shirt? I was really confused until I saw these and then I started looking at how to make templates for these with this. So this is like a flocked adhesive vinyl. It's not a heat transfer vinyl. It's not meant to be used with a heat press or any heat for that matter. Um, so it's just like a flocked vinyl. It is pretty thick. You can see here, it's, it's very thick. And it's not, you can tell it's not heat transfer because, or iron on, because the grid lines are on the back side. It's not like a clear mask on the front. Um, it's not a patterned one either that you put on a mask and then flip it over or anything like that. So <laughs> it is a flocked vinyl um, and that does show up in Cricut Design Space. So you'll definitely be able to tell the difference when you get this stuff. It's much thicker, it's much tougher, and it, feel, it has like a suede almost feel to it, which is pretty cool. Um, so Hotfix Rhinestones. I already forgot what it was called again. Flocked vinyl, heat press, template. We're gonna dive right on in. So the first step is going to be actually to get your flocked vinyl, figure out which one it is, your rhinestones. This is the important part, is figuring out which rhinestones you have. If you've gotten hot fix rhinestones from anybody else other than um, Heat Transfer Warehouse and you're not sure how to convert the measurements, I highly recommend you reaching out to the manufacturer to find out what size you need. Super important with this, unless you're freehanding it, then by all means, freehand away. <laughs> but I wanted to show you guys how to use it using a template. So the first step is gonna be finding your image. You're gonna wanna find what kind of image or template you want. For this video and pretty much everything that I'm gonna use these for, um, I downloaded a font from designbundles.net. You can see that on um, the next part of the video as well. And I just downloaded that onto my computer, uploaded the file. I show you exactly how to do that as well. So keep watching and I'll be back soon. Alrighty, so this is what I am using in uh, Cricut Design Space. Um, I got these fonts from designbundles.net and I'm gonna show you exactly how to put everything together so that you can create the template for your rhinestones. So what I did was I went over to designbundles.net and I looked up rhinestone designs, dance rhinestones. Um, you can just search rhinestones. Um, they have plenty of options to choose from. Um, the file that I chose is this one, rhinestone or vinyl template. You can use this with SS10 stones or any other stones really. I'm gonna show you how to size it based on what you need. And then what I'm going to do is uh, also show you how to use the template or the file, sorry, not the template, the file that you need. So you just download it to your computer. I'm using a MacBook Pro, so the process is going to be a little bit different. You're going to open the file where it has downloaded to. Here's mine, Cricut. Um, it's a zip folder, so you have to open it. And then you go into layer SVG and you just put that into design space and your uploads over here. And then from there, I've got my design right here. And then you add to that to the canvas. Once it's added, it is very, very large. 
Um, but you can see here, it shows right here. So for the whole thing, um, it actually tells you the instructions, but it says 11.11 11 by 14.26 is the size of the whole thing. But if you want to use um, different sizes or if you don't want to use all the letters and you want to use certain letters, it's not too difficult to um, ungroup. So basically what I did was for some reason these are all separated so I just ungrouped hid that so that got rid of that and it brought me over to this and actually for the SS10 rhinestones from heat transfer warehouse you want to keep your um, graphic this exact size you don't want to make it any smaller this is the exact size that you need your rhinestone holes to be so if you want to use a different size, definitely go for it. I mean, this is just what I have. So, <laughs> and to show you that it is exactly what you need, I'm going to pull it. Maybe hold on one second. Oh, goodness. Select these guys and then bring the M over to the M and you'll see that they match pretty darn closely. And it doesn't matter that part. It's more like, do the circles line up? And they do. So I'll show you how to do that in a minute. All right, so then from here, you have all these rhinestone letters that you need to ungroup. So you just choose what letters you want um, and hide them. The other way to do it is to just scroll all the way up here and hide the whole thing. And then very easily just go down to here and select which one you want to see or not it won't let you do that that's wild the last file I did allowed me to do that All right so we're gonna unhide that I suppose <laughs> rehide that and then scroll all the way down to these guys and hide everyone that we don't want the other way to do it is just what I did was select the whole thing and then ungroup. So right click, ungroup, and then you just delete the ones that you don't want. Much quicker. <laughs> okay. Computer's a little laggy, sorry. Okay, there we have it. And then you gather your letters here. These are just my initials, guys. All right, and then I like to align them so that they are perfect. Okay, now you have CML and CML, the exact same way that I wanted it. Um, so then what we want to do is insert a circle, shapes, circle. Now getting the exact measurements from um, the manufacturer for the rhinestones for me wasn't too hard because they're from Heat Transfer Warehouse and they're really, really, really good at being communicative and helping me with the things that I need. Um, their customer service is very good. So what I asked for was the size of the rhinestone. So she told me, I was told that they were 2.8 to 3 millimeters big. So what I did was I put that conversion into Google to separate it into inches and it came out to be 0.11 of an inch. So basically what I do is I just remove that and put 0.11 and there we have the exact same size as what these little guys are. Now, the way to make sure, because it's kind of really hard to see, is I changed, as you can see, the color of, you can either change the color of the circle or the color of your template. For this one, we'll use the color of the circle. And you'll just hover right over to make sure 
that it fits in there. And you can zoom in and see this is a little smaller. Oops. Oh, no, it just didn't calculate right. And you can see here that it's it's pretty close. So, and then if you need to, she did say 2.8 to 3 millimeters. So it could be that it's just a little bit too small. So bring it up here. Well, let me make it bigger. And do maybe 0.15. Oh, that's too big, see? It's gonna be very finicky. There we go. And now when you put it over the circle, you very minimally see the rest of the circle, the back circle. <laughs> so maybe we'll try 0.135. There we go. And that looks to be the exact same size as what we need here. So the goal is to have the gray circle here not be visible under the purple circle there. And the reason for that is because this is the size that you're going to put your rhinestones into, like into your suede material. And, um, that's what's going to hold them in place while you put the um, the heat transfer mask on top of it so that it doesn't go all over the place. So as you can see, they're about the right size. And because it's about the right size, we're good to go. This one I did, these are 0.11 for the circles. So they're a little smaller. I'm actually going to cut both sizes to see which one fits better. Now what you're going to do is you can... Save this little dot for later if you want to, or you can just get rid of it for good. I just got rid of it. And then I'm going to actually attach my letters together so that way they don't go all over the place when I go to make it. And then we're gonna head on over. Alrighty, now that we've got our design, we've got our template all mocked up in design space, we're ready to cut it with the Cricut. Um, so I've got my flocked vinyl here on a mat and Yes, I'm using a light grip mat. You don't have to use a light grip. You can use whatever mat you want. Um, you could even use a strong grip because the back of the flocked vinyl has like a, it's a paper, but it's got like a coating on it. So it's not gonna rip off if you use a strong grip mat or anything like that. But as you can see here, um, when I put it on, it already is lifting a little bit. So it's super important to have a brayer or like a, a squeegee of sorts, but you're gonna wanna make sure that you just smooth that down. That way all of your corners are really pressed into that mat, really stuck on there. Because if you don't, as, you're, as the cricket's going through, it's gonna catch and then pull. And you don't want that, I promise. It messes up your whole thing because it'll slide and move and everything. I've even got major trust issues. So sometimes I'll like throw some scotch tape on the corners of all of my vinyl. I don't care how sticky my mats are or how new they are. Sometimes I just feel very anti-trusty and <laughs> will decide to tape everything. So I've got it on there real nice and flat. And I like to do a little test. So if you bend it just a little bit, none of your corners come up. See? Okay. All right. So now we're going to go on to the Cricut and let it go through the first pass through. Okay. So the first pass is done on the um, flocked vinyl and you can't even pull up one of the circles. So major tip slash hack here that I've kind of gone over before, but I'll repeat again for this specific project. So I haven't pulled my mat out of my Cricut yet. It's still in there as if I was getting ready to hit the eject button, but I'm not going to. I'm gonna leave it just as it is, and I'm simply going to, instead of hitting the arrows, I'm gonna hit go again. And I will continue to do that every time 
until I can pull up those little circles. This prevents having to trial and error and pull up and potentially start all over or get like overcuts or undercuts. Um, and then also it prevents going too deep to where it's cutting all the way through. You don't want it to cut all the way through because it leaves a massive mess on your mat. So just hit the go button, let it run its course as many times as it needs to. Once this is done, I'll tell you exactly how many times it took my Cricut on the setting that we have, that I picked in the computer. <laughs> and that way you know which one to choose. I have the Maker 3 and there's just a regular, um, words are hard, a regular blade, fine point blade in there, nothing, no knife blade or anything like that. It's just a regular, uh, fine point blade and the Maker 3 and I use the MacBook Pro. Computer doesn't really make a difference on the Cricut cutting, but that way you know. <laughs> All right, as soon as it's done cutting, I'll be back. All right, so we finally got all the little circles out. I stopped it at four cuts, but I will tell you, stop it at five or maybe six because I had to individually pick out every single one of these stupid little dots. So five or six cuts, I would say. Um, unless you wanna do it on a um, more setting, then it would probably only take like three, maybe four cuts. Um, but you don't want it to go all the way through because then it leaves all those little dots all over your mat with the backing attached and that's not fun. All right, so I've got a couple of different options here. I have some tweezers. I have my flat tip tweezers. I have the squeegee thing. It's actually not used for crafting, but it is today. Got this little scrapey thingy and some more tweezers. All the tools that we're gonna need to shove these little guys into place here. All right, so what you're gonna do is take and sprinkle these onto your, and this is where we find out if they were 2.8 or three millimeters. We're gonna see which ones they stick to better. So you just sprinkle it like that at first and then take your scraper and gently kind of just ah, push them into place. This is probably a terrible idea to do on the mat, but whatever, we're here. There's no turning back now. So you're gonna wanna try to push as many of these into place as possible. It's less that you have to individually pick and prod and put in. It's looking like it's more the top one, which was the three, than it was, oh, well, hmm. Either one works. I mean, I'm not really seeing a difference on which size was better. Let's see if maybe this scraper works a little better. Nope, I have more control with this guy. I'm gonna put these little stones back on. So the point in this stuff here is that it's not sticky, it's very soft. So. The rhinestones will just kind of like glide around on it and fall into the holes. And then the backing to this stuff is so freaking sticky um, that you can reuse these templates over and over and over again. All right, so as you can see, it's not like, it's one of those, it's like diamond painting things where it's very tedious and very not wanting to go in the right area or direction that you want it to. So I'm going to do this off camera. That way you're not waiting 45 minutes for me to put these into place. Now, my OCD brain is telling me to not just scrape because I feel like maybe they're going to fall out of place, but once you get them into place and then blah, blah, blah. But they're actually falling into this top one a lot easier than the bottom one. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these all in place and then we'll continue on to the next step. 
Okie dokie, so we have our rhinestones in place on our flocked vinyl. I wanted to get that before I forgot. And you want to really make sure that you don't have any um, extra rhinestones hanging around and that they're all in place where they should be. And it looks like mine are. Um, I did notice that using the scrapers for me was a no-go. I actually preferred to use my finger. Um, just because then I can feel the texture of where it's going and if it's flipped over properly or not. All right, so I've got some heat transfer mask right here. This is actually from Easy Subly stuff, um, so I really hope that it does work. Um, it should, but we'll find out. All right, so I cut it way too big, but that's okay. Just gonna. Right, so you just take your clear mask. Oh no, and I've already got a few coming up. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna have to realign those. Um, gently pick them up using a scraper. I wonder if I can just squeeze them right back into place where they should be before I pick the mask up. And you should like shove them back. Oh yeah, that worked, okay. So all I did was push it back into place using my squeegee. I don't know if it's necessarily gonna work for all of them, but we will find out. Yeah, it's mostly working. I questioned where I was putting my tape or mask and that's why they got all funky. So have faith in your placement. Okay. That actually worked really well. So I just took the squeegee and like pushed them back into place. Okay. And then we're just going to lift, gently lift this up because that one is still there. Because you don't want them to fall off. And it's working really well. All right, and actually, as you can see, both of them fit. So it doesn't matter 2.8 or 3.0 millimeters. So that was 0.11 or I think 0.12. Um, didn't make a huge difference either way. All right, so we have our first transfer and it turned out really well. Um, I'm nervous that it's gonna fall off. And that's what it looks like. And I'm actually going to be putting this on um, a dish towel. Nothing fancy, just a little 100% cotton dish towel. Hopefully that it, <laughs> it presses properly because it does have some like ridges. So I don't know if you can see them, but they're not, it's not like a flat, there you go, a flat surface. So I'm gonna go ahead and place this on here while my heat press finishes heating up. You want it set to um, 315 for 15 seconds. I think that's what it is. Yes. 315 for 15 seconds. He's already like sliding all over the place. Let's move you out of the way. Yeah. And then if you wanted to like make these and ship them out, you could easily put this back onto this backing and you would have a great backing for it. Stay put. All right. I usually have a lint roller, but uh, I'm failing this train today. That's all right. It'll be okay. 
So what we're gonna do is in just a second, we're gonna head on over to my heat press. I'm gonna do a pre-press on this and then I'm gonna press it, okay? All right, so the heat press is up to 311 now, so I can go ahead and do my quick pre-press here. Basically, we're just going to do right at the bottom to get out any moisture that might be in there. And just wait a minute, and it's 355 for 15 seconds. I was wrong. It doesn't seem like a whole lot of time, but 355 is pretty high, so it should be good. All right, so now that we've got it pre-pressed, I'm going to place my rhinestone transfer from where I need it to be. This is totally up to you on where you want it placed. Doesn't matter as long as it's got a flat surface to work from. And I'm not using a pressing pillow because I don't have any. I've been meaning to get some. Um, but for something like this, it's probably smarter to use a pressing pillow because it has this seam on both ends here that's probably going to cause some issue with all of them sticking. So I might have a little bit of extra um, pressing to do. We are almost at temperature and my press does run a little hot. So I'm going to go ahead and press it at 345 um, just because it does run pretty hot. And actually, parchment paper, you want this stuff to protect both your press and your product. Sorry if that was really loud. I'm just going to place this right under here. Slide my image right under, give it a good press. You don't want it to be too long or too much pressure, just your normal cotton setting uh, minus the time and the temperature that's 355 for 15 seconds. Um, and it's supposed to be a warm peel, so we're gonna see how that goes. Okay, lift it, turn it over. Move my parchment paper down, and let's see what we got here. Oh, looks like we are golden. It's in there, and this is so pretty. I cannot wait to do my daughter's dance thing. So you can see here, I'm like, this is literally right after it was pressed. I'm pretty much rubbing as much as I can on here just to see because I'm crazy like that. I have trust issues like we spoke about earlier. But this is so cool, it's on there. It's not going anywhere. See? And you can, of course, feel it, um, but they're not coming off. I'm not gonna do the other one today. I'm gonna wait, um, just because I wanna put it on a makeup bag and I don't have said makeup bag yet. Um, but this is on there. Like, they are not coming off. And the only, it's like adhered, because it's a terry towel, so it's gonna have like, those pieces lifting off, but on the ones that are like not there, they're not coming off. I would love to do this on like a gym bag for my daughter's dance stuff or my son's CrossFit stuff. That'd be pretty sweet. All right, so I'm gonna move on back over to the uh, tripod so that I can tell you how to take care of this. Alrighty, so gentle cycle, inside out, all that good fun stuff. Do what I say, not what I do. Um, I'm probably just going to chuck it in a regular wash with the rest of my towels because that's what I do. I typically just throw it in there and pray to the laundry lords and hope for the best. So if you really want to do it right, listen to what I say and not what I do. Gentle cycle, cold, and um, if you're doing a t-shirt or something that can be flipped inside out, you definitely want to wash it inside out and hang dry. Um, but like I said, these are pretty on there, so I don't feel like they're going to come off, but you never know. You can always just do what I do, throw it in, pray for the best. <laughs> All right, but I am really impressed with these. Again, they are the Hot Fix Rhinestones. Um, I got mine from Heat Transfer Warehouse, and this material is the Flocked Adhesive Vinyl doesn't matter what color you get 
it's just for a template making process. Um, and then what I used for the mask was the site, the um, Easy Subly mask. You can use any heat transfer mask. So if you've done some iron on vinyl recently and you have that mask still, save that. Be resourceful because that stuff will work just as well for this. So there you have it, my friends. That is how you sub, not sublimate. I've done sublimation so much. That is how you use hot fix rhinestones. Remember, like this video, comment, share, all that good fun stuff. And I'm gonna drop some links down in the description for you so you can get you some of these hot fix rhinestones. Until next time, happy crafting.